look out your window in the hills tonight or think about the last time you took a two-lane road through old mining country. You pass a cut bank where the road crew sliced into rock. You see gray layers, rusty stains, and white seams. You roll past a closed tipple, a quiet rail spur, and a hollow where houses sit tight in a narrow strip. You can feel it in your steering wheel. The land keeps telling you where to go. It tells you where the road can fit. It tells you where the creek can run. It even tells you where a town can survive. And for a long time, people thought this region was used up. They thought the mines were empty, the hills were tapped out, and the science was done. That is the mystery right in front of your face. How can a place feel exhausted and overlooked, yet still hold surprises that change the map? For decades, nobody could figure out why the rivers here seem to ignore the mountains. They cut straight through the highest ridges instead of going around them. It looks like the water did the impossible. Now we know exactly why this happens. Here is what makes this question hit hard for folks who live there. When jobs leave, it feels like the land failed you. When young people move out, it feels like your town lost a fight. But the truth is simpler and steadier. This ground was built under rules older than any company. Those rules set limits on farming, roads, mining, and growth. That is not shame. That is physics. And it also means something else. If the land set the rules, the land can still hold value that people missed. Not magic, not legends. Real, measured value. The kind that shows up in lab numbers. These mountains are 480 million years old. That is before dinosaurs existed. It is before trees or even fish walked on land. They are six times older than the Rockies. The evidence is clear. These mountains have outlasted every other range on the continent. They are the ultimate survivors. If you drive through Pennsylvania today, you'll notice rivers cutting through mountains. This happens because of forces from 300 million years ago. Back then, this land sat on the equator. It was a tropical rainforest. Giant ferns grew 100 feet tall. When they died, they fell into swamps. The water kept oxygen away, so the plants didn't rot. They piled up for millions of years. Then the land rose up. Heat and pressure cooked those plants into coal. That coal is why your grandfather had a job. It is why the railroad came to your valley. It is why the steel mills in Pittsburgh could run 24 hours a day. The coal didn't just happen. It was a gift from a tropical world that vanished 300 million years ago. This was 299 million years before any European set foot in America. The mountains used to stand taller than the Himalayas. They were five miles high. Think about stacking 100 skyscrapers on top of each other. That is how much rock used to be above your head. But wind and rain wear things down. The process is slow. It happens at about two inches every thousand years. That is slower than your fingernails grow. But over 480 million years, that is enough to wear away 16,000 feet of solid stone. What you see today are just the roots of the original peaks. The hard rock resisted the weather. The soft rock washed away into the ocean. This created the ridges and valleys we see now. The land didn't fail. It just got pruned down to its toughest parts. Scientists at Penn State and Virginia Tech spent years trying to solve the river mystery. They looked at the new river in West Virginia. It is one of the oldest rivers in the entire world. Most rivers follow the path of least resistance. They find a gap and flow through it. But the new river cuts right through the hardest rock in the state. It makes no sense if the mountains were there first. For a long time, the theory was that the mountains formed and then the water found a way through. But the numbers didn't add up. The rock in the mountains is 300 million years old. The river valley looks much younger. So geologists started drilling. They took core samples from the gorge walls. They used radioactive dating to check the age of the silt and the stones. 
This dating method works like a geological clock. Inside certain rocks, there is uranium. Over time, uranium breaks down into lead. It happens at a very specific, steady rate. By measuring how much lead is in the sample, scientists can tell exactly when the rock formed. It is not a guess. It is math. They tested samples at Virginia Tech and UNC. The results were confirmed by six different expert groups. They found something that changed everything. The river was already there. It was flowing across a flat plain before the mountains even existed. Then, the land started to rise. It rose up very slowly. As the ground came up, the river stayed in its place. It cut down into the rising ground like a saw cutting through a log as you lift the log up. The water was stronger than the rising earth. This explains why your town sits in a narrow lane. The river didn't find the valley. The river made the valley while the mountain tried to grow. This is why the roads are so winding and the space for houses is so tight. The geography determined everything about how the towns were built. The flat spots were rare. People built where the water allowed them to. This pattern created isolated communities. Each hollow became its own world. That is why the culture here is so strong and unique. It was shaped by the rock walls that kept people together in small groups. You didn't choose to live in a tight space. The tectonic forces 200 million years ago decided that for you. The real smoking gun came from the ocean floor. In the 1960s, geologists mapped the bottom of the Atlantic. They found a giant mountain range underwater. They realized the continents were once joined together. This giant landmass was called Pangaea. When the continents crashed together, it pushed up the eastern mountains. This was a massive collision. It was like two cars hitting head-on at 100 miles per hour, but in slow motion. The ground buckled and folded. But then the continents started to pull apart again. The Atlantic Ocean opened up like a giant crack in the earth. This split the mountain range in half. Geologists found the other half. They traveled to Scotland and Scandinavia. They collected rock samples there. When they brought them back to the lab, the match was perfect. The rocks in Scotland are the exact same age as the rocks in West Virginia. They have the same minerals. They have the same layers. They are identical. This is definitive proof. These mountains were once connected. You could have walked from a coal mine in Pennsylvania straight to a hill in Scotland without ever crossing an ocean. Three different universities tested these rocks. The results were published in the Journal of Geology. The case is settled. The mountains on both sides of the ocean are siblings. They were separated when the world tore itself apart 200 million years ago. Understanding this makes the decline of industry feel different. The coal was a finite resource trapped in a specific geological layer. Once it was pulled out, the economic engine that depended on it had to change. But the land remains. The ridges still stand. The rivers still flow in the paths they carved millions of years ago. The soil in the valleys is rich because it is made of worn down mountain minerals. Every raindrop that falls in Pittsburgh eventually reaches the Ohio River. That river drains 15 states. That is nearly a third of the entire eastern United States. Every bit of rain from North Carolina to Pennsylvania flows through this system. This massive drainage basin is why the cities formed where they did. They were the collection points for everything the land produced. If the mountains had been just 500 feet lower, the entire settlement pattern would be different. The rivers would have flowed in different directions. The coal would have been deeper and harder to reach. Your town might not exist at all. If the ice sheets from 12,000 years ago had pushed just 100 miles further south, they would have ground these mountains into dust they would have left behind thin, rocky soil that nothing could grow in. But the glaciers stopped. 
they left the region's heart untouched. This was the end of the Ice Age, when woolly mammoths still walked through Ohio. It was 10,000 years before the pyramids were built. The fact that your region survived the ice is a geographic miracle. It gave the area a head start on building the forests and soil that supported the first people who lived here. The land is not just a backdrop. It is the lead actor in the story. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These mountains were here 480 million years ago, and they will be here 480 million years from now. They will just be a little shorter. Industries come and go, people move in and out, but the rock doesn't change. Your region's geology determined how it developed. It decided where the iron ore would be. It decided where the deep water ports would be. It decided which valleys would be good for farming and which would be good for timber. That is not a failure of the people. It is the reality of the ground. When people from the coast look at the map and wonder why things are the way they are, they are missing the point. They are looking at the people, but they should be looking at the rocks. Every region has its own scoreboard. The Rockies are tall and flashy, but they are young. They haven't stood the test of time. The Eastern Range has survived continental splits, ice ages, and millions of years of rain. It is still here. That longevity is a badge of honor. The evidence shows that the land provided everything it could. It gave up its coal and its timber to build the country. It provided the paths for the railroads and the rivers for the barges. It did its job perfectly. The economic changes we see today are temporary ripples on a very old pond. The permanent landscape is the only thing that lasts. The breakthrough in understanding the new river came from a team led by Dr. Mills in 1989. They worked for four summer seasons in the heat and the rain. They climbed the cliffs of the gorge to get the samples they needed. This wasn't a guess made in an office. This was hard work in the field. They proved that the river cuts down at one inch every 800 years. When you multiply that by the height of the gorge, the timeline matches the rising of the land perfectly. This is the smoking gun. The rates match. The ages match. The math works. The rivers were already here when the modern mountains started to rise about two million years ago. The mountains rose underneath the flowing water. The water just kept cutting. This research is only a few decades old. Most people still think the mountains came first. You are learning the true story before it hits the mainstream textbooks. You are seeing the real mechanics of the world. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finally seeing how the engine works. The engine of your region is the rock. It is the foundation of every house and the base of every road. It is why the weather turns cold at the top of the ridge. If you go up 2,000 feet, the temperature drops 10 degrees. That is like stacking 40 houses on top of each other. That height creates its own climate. It creates different trees and different animals. The geography controls the biology. The case for geographic determinism is closed. We know why the towns are in the hollows. We know why the rivers cut the mountains. We know why the coal is there. It wasn't random luck. It was a sequence of events that started 480 million years ago. When you see a road closed sign due to a rock slide, you are seeing those ancient forces still at work. The land is still settling. The mountains are still eroding. The water is still cutting. This is a living system that moves on a clock too big for us to see. But the science has mapped it out. The patterns are understood. The mystery that seemed so confusing for a hundred years has been solved by people with drills and lab equipment. Image showing the collision of continents forming mountains and then pulling apart to create an ocean. Think about the sheer scale of 300 million years. That is 299 million years before humans even looked like humans. 
It is a time so long that mountains can turn into sand and oceans can turn into mountains. In that time, the land has been a swamp, a forest, a mountain peak, and a valley floor. It has moved from the equator to where it sits today. Through all of that, it has held onto its secrets. But now, we have the keys. We can read the layers like pages in a book. Each layer of sandstone, shale, and coal tells a specific story about a specific time. The rusty stains are iron. The white seams are quartz. The gray layers are ancient mud. It is all right there for you to see the next time you drive through a road cut. The anxiety people feel about their region's future is real but it helps to remember that the ground is the most stable thing we have. It has seen industries rise and fall before. It saw the timber era come and go. It saw the iron era come and go. It saw the coal era peak and fade. Each time, the people adapted to what the land offered. The land is not empty. It still has its geography. It still has its position. It still has its rivers and its ridges. These are permanent assets. They are the same assets that made the region a powerhouse in the first place. The rocks didn't change. Only the way we use them changed. When you look at the map of the eastern United States, you see a series of lines. The ridges run from the southwest to the northeast. They are like a set of wrinkles in a rug. Those wrinkles were made by the collision with Africa hundreds of millions of years ago. Every town in those wrinkles has a story that is tied to that collision. If your town is in a valley, it's because the rock there was a little bit softer and washed away. If your town is on a ridge, it's because the rock there was a little bit harder and stayed put. You are living on the scars of a global battle between continents. That is a powerful thing to realize. It takes the weight off your shoulders. The layout of your life was drawn by the Earth itself. The definitive answer is that geography is the boss. It dictates the terms. It allows for certain types of life and certain types of work. Understanding this gives you a sense of closure. You can stop wondering if things could have been different. If the geology is X, then the development has to be Y. It is a formula. The evidence from the core samples, the radioactive clocks, and the ocean mapping all point to the same conclusion. The land set the pattern, and the pattern is fixed. This is the comfort of geology. It is too big to argue with and too old to care about our temporary problems. It just is. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These geological forces were active hundreds of millions of years ago and remain active today. Industries change and populations shift, but the underlying landscape stays constant. The geographic patterns we see today were determined by ancient forces beyond human control. This is not about human decisions. It is about physics written in stone. The case is settled. Core samples and radioactive dating proved this formation occurred through continental collision, creating the boundary that still controls how water flows and where development occurs today. Next time you see this pattern, you're witnessing that ancient geological force in action. The same processes that shaped the land millions of years ago are still working today just too slowly to notice in a human lifetime. Understanding these permanent geological forces helps explain why certain patterns exist in the landscape. The geographic features we observe are not random. They are the direct result of ancient processes that science has now fully documented and explained.